Real estate, like everything else in life, has its ebbs and its flows. And in today's market, house sales have softened. So if you've had loads of viewings and no offers, you've got to work out why this is happening and do something about it. Because in a slowing market, missed opportunities are something you can't afford. Single mum Catherine has her lovely, spacious house up for sale. But it's been lingering on the market for three whole months. It's listed at $449,000. It's had 70 showings and six open houses. She's also recently married Ian, a firefighter, and would love to move into his house, but she can't until she sold this one. But that's why we're here, to put out the real estate fires and to turn this house from unsellable to sellable. This house has been um, a wonderful family home and it's served us really well. So I'm not really sure why it hasn't sold. I'm wondering if there's just no wow in the house. We were hoping the house would be sold around the time we got married. It's very odd that we're not living together. It is stressful. It is frustrating and I do want to get on with my new life. And we just can't do that until this house sells. With parks and the waterfront close by, this area is known as an upscale family community. So, we know the neighbourhood has a lot going for it, but let's see what the inside of Catherine's house looks like. Sophie, hi, so glad you're here. Lovely to meet you. Should we start in here? Sure. Great proportions, lovely big window. Did you choose the peach paint? Well, yes, I had it painted when I first moved mm -hmm. in. Now, this furniture, it looks like it's seen a few summers. It's seen a lot of summers and a lot of children climbing mm -hmm. on it. Curious, did you put this carpet in? No, no, this carpet was here when I got uh -huh. here. I wonder if it has hardwood floor underneath. It does, it has oak. That is fantastic. I do have to say, your house is immaculately clean. So you're on the right track there, but it's not enough on its own. And this is the dining room? Yes, it is. Very nice. But the combination of the armoire and the pink paint, it makes it look a bit old fashioned. And I don't think I've seen frosted glass windows <laughs> for, for a while. But the bare bones are here, definitely. So, this must be the kitchen. Yep. Not a bad size. Eating kitchens, a big plus when selling because families love them, so that's all great. But what I would say is there's a lot of different textures going on. You've got the oak handles here, the oak at the back of the cupboards, but then you've got brown sort of terracotta tiles, olive green walls, but we can do something with this kitchen. You're very tactful. <laughs> I'm not always tactful. <laughs> wow, this is the longest, peachiest corridor I have <laughs> ever seen. Love the floor. Is this the floor we're going to find under the carpet in the sitting room? Yes. That is very, very exciting. Your two daughters' rooms are down here, but it's the master bedroom that I really want to take a look at. So the journey from peach to purple is complete. Very dark wood furniture. It's quite overpowering in a room this size. I mean, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. But good sized room. You've got the hardwood floors, which is lovely. But now we go down and we have our little chat. Terrific. Now, this house has bags of potential, but it looked like it was last decorated when shoulder pads and leg warmers were in style. That's putting potential buyers off. So it's time for me to get tough. This is not a lost cause by any means. You've got a fantastic house. Having said that, in a slow and competitive market, you need to address the things that are holding the house back. Because, to be honest, you've got the price tag right, but the decor is not matching the price tag at the moment. In this room, for instance, it's the combination of the peach paint, the old leather furniture, the slightly old drapes. It's not singing at the moment. Mm. In here, I like your armoire, but it makes this room look quite small. And in the kitchen, it's great that it's an eating kitchen, but it just needs some tender, loving care. Great. Moving upstairs, the endless peach corridor. It needs to be repainted and put stuff on the walls, make it look a bit more interesting. And people don't tend to like purple master bedrooms, unless they're under five or ten. <laughs> So we want this house to look elegant, to look modern, to look classic. 
and then it will appeal to a broad range of potential buyers, which is important no matter what state the market's in. And you can get on with your life and move in with your new husband. That would be terrific. Catherine has a great house and it's in a beautiful area, but she is going to have to do a lot more to it if she wants to wow potential buyers. Peach walls, grey carpets, fine in the 80s, but fashions change and now the house just looks outdated. So if Catherine and her two daughters want to move house anytime soon, they're going to have to say out with the old and in with the new. Catherine's neighbourhood is quiet and picturesque and they even bury the power lines and the telephone lines so you don't have to look at the ugly blighters, which means it's even more surprising that Catherine's house hasn't sold. And that is why I'm about to meet Rose, the real estate agent, to get to know this house just that little bit better. Rose, you'd have 70 viewings, six open houses. It's been on the market for three months. So what do you think is wrong with the house? I think one of the main reasons why it didn't sell was it was too high as in the marketplace mm -hmm. price-wise. So you've already reduced the price, which is important, because often people price their homes incorrectly. Understanding the market and adjusting accordingly is key. Absolutely. Hopefully the new listing price will help, but the decor does need some updating. And first impressions are so key. So with a few modern updates, we're going to have a sellable property on our hands, despite the slow market. Thank you so much. Sophie. Lovely to meet you. And you. Catherine's real estate agent Rose and I both agree that the uninspiring and tired decor is really affecting her sale. And that's why I want to show Catherine a comparable house in the neighbourhood that is not only modern and classy, but also sold very, very quickly. Now, before you say anything, I know this is considerably smaller than your sitting room. In fact, the whole house is smaller than your house. But it's in the same area, and there's a lot of elements of this house that I'd like to implement in yours, starting with the floor. It's beautiful. Also, it's just nice, calm, updated colours. I, I can see what you mean. Now, I'll come on through to the dining room. Now, again, different layout but similar size. Nice colour palette, hardwood floors. That just gives it a contemporary look. I really see what you mean. Anyway, let's move on with our tour. It's very modern. It is very modern. It's very contemporary. But having said that, cupboards, I don't think they're very modern. They've just been freshly painted and they've got new hardware on them. Really? Yeah, I say it again and again and again. The best way to update your kitchen is to paint the cupboards and put on new hardware. It's an immediate, instant facelift. What I'd like to do in your kitchen is tone down the Mediterranean a little bit, <laughs> and it can look as gorgeous as this. That would be fabulous. Let's go upstairs, then. After you. It's a nice, calming colour palette, and there's not a lot of dark furniture. So it just looks really lovely. It's like a little haven up here. And that's what buyers these days are looking for, especially in the master bedroom. Now, I know this house is appealing to potential buyers because it sold for just under the asking price in 20 days. Wow. Your house has everything going for it, and we can make it sell incredibly quickly. That would be fabulous. OK. Well, let's go and do it then. All right. We have a lot of work to do, so to help us modernise Catherine's dated house, I've called on general contractor Anthony Sayers. Catherine, I spoke to you earlier about some of the changes we're going to make, the design changes, but I'm going to let Anthony here, our contractor, That's fill in the rest of the blanks. Terrific. Can't wait to hear. We'll start by removing the carpet, expose the hardwood floor that's under there. It'll be just like brand new. So that's brilliant. Yes. Also, um, I'm going to update some of your furniture, mostly the furniture upstairs in the bedroom. We're going to paint it out and add some stylish hardware. Wow. Great. And uh, the kitchen. We just need to tone down the colors and neutralize the style of the kitchen. I think all the changes are going to make a huge difference because at the moment, people are expecting a certain standard when they walk in. They're wanting elegant, modern and classic and that is what we're going to give them. Terrific. Brilliant. It sounds like we've got a lot to do then. Yes, so we do. let's get to it. Excellent.
grey carpet is no more. You like? I love. So what I did was I took the carpet up, I cut it into three foot strips, make it easier to dispose and dump. And then whatever tack strips that were around the edge, it holds the carpet in place. There was a million staples throughout the floor. So I removed them all. And what I've done is I've sanded out any water marks or any damaged area. Uh -huh. Just try to clean the floor up as best as possible. And then you're ready to very thin. Is this this milky stuff? Yes. Uh, the key to this, you don't want to shake the can. Right. You need to take a stick and stir it from the bottom and bring it up from the bottom. If you shake the can, it'll leave air bubbles. And then once you put it on the floor, the bubbles will dry and it will be a disaster. And then you'll have to redo your floor all over again. No, definitely don't want to do that. No. I'm so impressed. It looks a million times better. I think it makes the room look bigger. And from a resale point of view, hardwood floor, so much better than carpet. This looks beautiful and it's easy to clean. Now you come in and it's like a wow factor again. Yeah, it looks elegant, not 80s. Catherine's house is structurally sound, and that is of crucial importance for potential buyers. But the decor was distinctly uninspiring. But now, the changes we've made are beginning to have a big impact. Pretty amazing what a coat of paint can do. I've taken a sprayer and sprayed this piece. I had four or five pieces to do, so that's why I use the sprayer, and I like the finish that it gives you. You can achieve the same look by using a, a brush and painting it out, but it'll just take you a lot longer. I rented the sprayer from a big box hardware store for $90. Always spray outdoors, wearing a mask and goggles, and use a tart for the overspray. You need to let it dry for about 24 hours, but never under direct sunlight, because it might bubble and peel. I changed the handles to give the cabinet a more updated look. I've transformed this old piece of furniture that they were gonna throw out into something sleek, stylish, and looks brand new. Refurbishing old furniture is a cost-effective way to modernize your decor, which will give your house an edge in the marketplace. This comparable house has done just that. It's an older home, but with an updated feel inside. An uncluttered living room with neutral colours on the walls allows buyers to visualise their own things in the space, the first step towards a sale. Hardwood floors are considered an upgrade and are a feature realtors highlight in their listings. And this flooring carries right through to the dining area, creating a warm, inviting flow that buyers will notice instantly. The eating kitchen is the showstopper, modern and obviously updated. But as I've said before, painting your cabinets in lighter tones and giving the kitchen a thorough clean can give off the same great impression as this one. Upstairs, the contemporary master bedroom is painted a soothing light colour and the furniture blends into the space instead of standing out like a sore thumb. Buyers walking in can immediately picture themselves in this house, which is exactly what it's all about when you're trying to sell. Catherine's house wasn't selling because it was looking tired and old, but now with the changes we've made, the house looks modern and elegant, and I think potential buyers will really appreciate its classic feel. Catherine's 80s-inspired living room was putting buyers off, so we brought it decades forward with a little upgrade. At minimal cost, we've replaced her overstuffed furniture with a modern sofa and love seat, which has updated the look of the room. And contemporary pieces make this space feel inviting. New drapes create a feature out of the front window and the natural light coming through. But most impressive are the hardwood floors. Hardwood is a hot selling feature these days and just by ripping up the carpet, we've increased the value of the house immediately. The dining room had few issues, so we simply rearranged Catherine's original pieces, moving the armoire and adding accessories. By taking off the old French doors, we've opened up the space, which gave the main floor much better flow, something buyers will definitely notice. The kitchen wasn't terrible, but it needed to be refreshed, so by painting the cupboards and walls, we gave it a clean, updated look. 
Kitchens are a key selling feature and can make or break a sale, so you don't want buyers feeling like it needs a ton of work. That boring upstairs hallway seemed to go on forever, but by painting the walls and adding some artwork, we've turned it into a bright, welcoming space that nicely leads you on to the bedrooms. The master bedroom's old furniture and purple walls were far from a peaceful haven. So we've turned it into a space that feels as calm as it does neutral, especially with Catherine's refurbished bedroom set. Rearranging or removing some furniture can open up a space to reveal its true potential. A quick fix that doesn't cost a thing. With new contemporary drapery embedding, this room confirms the overall sense that this house is move-in ready. And at a total cost of $3,500, the transformation is bound to attract a slew of new buyers, which is well worth the price. If you have original hardwood floor hiding under ugly old carpet, take the plunge and rip the carpet up because you could be left with beautiful wood floors that add considerable value to your home. If you own outdated furniture, but you're looking for a fresher, modern look, there's no need spending a fortune replacing the offending items. Spray painting furniture and adding contemporary hardware can work miracles. If your house has been listed for an extended period of time, potential buyers might begin to think there's something wrong with it, and that's why it hasn't sold. So, consider taking it off the market giving it a bit of a facelift and then re-listing it and that should generate re-interest. It's almost time for the open house and the changes we made to Catherine's home have created a contemporary feel. I think it looks fab, but it doesn't matter what I think, it's what the potential buyers think. Well, that's that. The work is done and it's time for the open house. Hopefully our transformation will create renewed interest in this property. And then Catherine and Ian, the newlyweds, can start their new life together under the one roof. Come on through. It's beautiful. I love the colors. Now, have you seen this house before or not? I did. I saw it when there was snow on the ground. It has been on the market a long time. Yeah. Was there carpeting before? There was carpeting before. How do you know? If you, I came through before. You came through it before. It's great. It looks very open, and the floor makes it look much cleaner. Do you like the color palette? Yeah. I don't think we would really be changing any colors, because it seems to have uh, very neutral colors. You've really brought it into the 2000s with the furniture and the mm -hmm. decor. Come on through to the dining room. So the first thing I notice is that you've opened up this space because that used to be closed off. Mm -hmm. And there was a big sign dresser there and it seemed very cramped, whereas it's, oh. it's much more open. I love the mirror. And now it's really bright and opened up. It's like a different house. Glad you say that now. <laughs> I think you will notice a big difference in the kitchen. Oh, wow, what a difference. This looks amazing. Yeah, you can basically just move in now. I love it when people say that. The nice little eat-in kitchen here, too. Yeah, and the handles, too. Yeah. yeah. Knobs are already there. Mm -hmm. Shall I show you to the master bedroom? Sure. Sure. I hope you're going to be pleased with the master bedroom. This is fabulous. Wow, wow. That's wow. the old the furniture. Same furniture? Wow. Same furniture. Wow. Repainted. What a difference. That looks absolutely beautiful. So all in all, what do you think of the transformation? I think it's fabulous. Yeah. Can't believe it's the same house. Is this the style of house that you can imagine starting married life in, your first oh, house? Yeah, definitely. definitely. <laughs> so you maybe would think of coming back for a second view? Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. We'll definitely be talking tonight. I think it's a possibility, and I think I'll bring my husband to come through. Fantastic. I always like showing realtors around the house because you get a professional opinion. So what do you think? I think now, uh, the improvements that you've made, it's much brighter and cleaner. It's got a lot of features that people are looking for. The hardwood, you can see the hardwood floors mm -hmm. now. Uh, it's got chic paint colors all throughout the house and uh, it really shows well. I don't think mm -hmm. it'll last long. Now it's on the market for $449,000. Competitive? I think it's very competitive. Mm -hmm. It should go very quickly. Fantastic. And hopefully you might have a few clients up your sleeves. I'm going to give them a call when I get out of here. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.
Well, judging by some of the comments we have at the open house, this home is showing as it should. New paint, refinished furniture, and a beautifully restored hardwood floor has turned this house from a bit of an old maid into a blushing bride, and from unsellable to sellable. The house is amazing. It looks so different. I recognize some of my old pieces, my furniture, but it looks totally different. It looks modern and contemporary. I'm hoping that the perfect buyer will come in, be very happy, and the house will sell quickly. And I'm really looking forward to being together full time with Ian. So it feels good that the house has a fresh beginning, just like I'm having a fresh beginning. After all the hard work on Catherine's house, I am happy to say that the newlyweds can finally start their married life under one roof. Catherine accepted a solid offer for very close to asking price from a buyer who fell in love with the property, turning it from unsellable to sold. Selling your house isn't something you do every day, so if things aren't going to plan, it can be difficult to know what to do. But if it's in your power to make improvements to your home, then do it. Because in today's erratic market, you won't get a second chance to make that first impression. And you can't just take it for granted that your house is going to sell like that. Adam and Christina are a young couple with two kids. They live in this spacious three-bedroom back split that's on the market for $269,000. It's in a suburb about 45 minutes out of the city. The couple want to move closer to their family, so they put their house on the market, but it's not selling, and time is running out. We've had our house on the market, I would say it's probably been about four months. I thought for sure it would have sold by now. Our style for our decor, I guess, would be uh, ultra modern. So I'm thinking that maybe it might be just decorated too modern for them and they can't see past that. Well, we want to sell the house now because, uh, because of the children, getting closer to family. Right now we travel back and forth just to visit and it's like a three hour drive, so it's really hard on the kids. Michaela, she's already three and she will be starting school next year. Just kind of want to get it over with and start our next chapter in our life. Adam and Christina's house is in a sought-after suburban community close to amenities and in one of Canada's fastest-growing cities. The property has a huge backyard and all the toys for kids and adults. And with a price tag of $269,000, someone should have snapped it up. But that's why we're here, to turn this house from unsellable to sellable. How are you? Nice to meet you. This is the living room. It is very rock and roll. Looks a bit like the back room of a recording studio. I like the open plan, but you've still got some dividing walls, which I think is nice. The colour choice is quite stark. This, this is more our style and yeah. uh, not other people's. Yeah. I do love your sofa, though. Oh, oh thank yeah. you. Thanks. We love it, too. You've done a fantastic job here because it's clean and decluttered, which is brilliant when you're trying to sell your house. So through here's the kitchen. Yes, it is. First thing, straight off the bat, not enough prep space. Potential buyers most likely to be families, mm -hmm. and they'll need more prep space. Oh, yeah, for sure. My second thought is it's all a bit haphazard. Yeah, these are our CD cabinets. <laughs> we didn't have enough space, so yeah. we took our CDs out and threw in food. CDs for cereal. Yeah, exactly. Right. Genius. I'm loving the fact it's clean, it's tidy, and it's decluttered. Mm -hmm. Because having a clean kitchen is one of the most important things when you're trying to sell your house. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it leads straight onto the dining room. Yeah. Nice-sized dining room. Thanks. The brightest drapes I have ever seen in yeah. my entire life. It ties the red in. You have matched all the colours. Yeah. They're just not necessarily what you'd expect to see in a kind of suburban house. Only you guys could paint a banister rail black. I painted that because uh, it was quite brown before and it didn't go with the theme we have going on in the house. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me about this, because it looks a bit like a banister rail. It was uh, my cheap solution at the time. I think we can do a bit better. Should we go to the master bedroom? So this is our bedroom. It's not a bad size. You'd think people would be able to see past a black bed, black chest drawers, black mirror. Yeah. But the fact is, I think it really influences people's decisions on a house. Now, I want to show you something outside. OK. You said you bought this house four years ago and it was really, really 70s. Yeah. 
Well, the outside's still pretty 70s. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> now, curb appeal's always important, but I think at the moment it's really important because the market is softening. Mm -hmm. Right. So we've got to use every weapon in our arsenal to really get this house sold. I want to have a bit of a chat now and discuss some of the things we've mentioned in the house. OK. OK. okay. This house has been on the market for three months, and I think it's because the interior is totally at odds with potential buyer's expectations. It's bold, but it's also incredibly stark. We are in the suburbs, and people are looking for a much more muted, grown-up palette. So it's time to read the Riot Act. Your house has so much going for it, but I think the decor is so out of sync with what people are expecting that they get a bit of a shock when they first walk through the door. Neutral, warm colour tones are good. Yes. OK. Because that just allows people to be able to see their own possessions in the house. The kitchen is not a bad size, but I'd say it's lacking in prep space, and that's very important to potential buyers especially in a family home. Spending a bit of money on the kitchen is definitely worthwhile. Moving on to the bedroom. If we can just make the colour choice slightly less bold. OK. The house is a bit dated on the outside. A slightly modern, fresher look is not going to do any harm. And if it entices people in, that's good. You're definitely not the average suburban couple in this area, mm -hmm. and your house reflects that. Mm -hmm. But just for the process of moving on and selling, I think mm -hmm. we should make it less urban and more suburban. OK. Are you up for that? I'm sure with your help we'll be able to get through this. Yeah, absolutely, and it will get your house sold. Christina and Adam are an urban couple who live in the suburbs. Their house is on the market, but having no luck selling. So I'm going to meet their agent, John, to find out why. Now, this house had 24 viewings of eight open houses. Why do you think people have not been making offers on this house? In order to sell a house and to open it up to the masses, you need neutral colours. Right, because suburban buyers want to move into a house that already has the look they want, so they don't have to spend money to do it themselves. For the most part, people, they're putting all the money down that they've got to secure the house. They don't have a lot of money to spend immediately after they move in, and there's a lot of choices in today's market as well. I think in a market like this, where there is a lot of competition and there are a lot of similar houses in the neighbourhood, buyers have more choice, so you've got to make sure your house is the best thing they see. You're absolutely right. You've got to be the best deal in town. I always think price, condition, location. So the price is right, we'll get the condition right, and the location is right. Location is excellent here. So we're on to a winner, John. Absolutely. Fantastic. Often when selling a house in the suburbs, the competition is fierce because there's a lot of houses with similar footprints. I'm going to go and show Christina and Adam a comparable house in the neighbourhood so they know what it takes to keep up with the Joneses. Here we have the kitchen. Now, the interesting thing about this kitchen is it's not brand new. But what is appealing about this kitchen to potential buyers is there's a lot of prep space, a lot of storage space, and an eaten area. Mm. And we can't make your kitchen any bigger, but what we can do is make the most of the usable space. OK. This is obviously not your style. No, no. definitely not. It's a lot more traditional than your house. And I think this is a look that, in this area, it's slightly more suburban. It's what a lot of people like. With your home, which very clearly has a different look to it, it's boxed into a niche market. And if you want to get it sold, you can't have that. You need traditional. Well, we're willing to compromise a bit. That's what I like to hear. Here we have a nice, family orientated sitting room. It's very warm and inviting. You've got the topes, the oatmeal, the beiges. And more importantly, it could not possibly offend anyone. No, it, it's very generic. And that is what I'd like to see in your house. OK. A look that's just more in keeping with the neighbourhood. Now, let's go and have a look down here. This bedroom furniture is very traditional, and it matches the tone in the rest of the house. Your bedroom doesn't quite feel like a master suite. I mean, if you were selling a downtown condo, you'd be in great shape, but we're in the suburbs. So we're looking for a brighter, more appealing master bedroom. What are your thoughts on the house? Very neutral, very generic. Now, I know this house is appealing to potential buyers because it's sold for just under the asking price in 35 days. Wow. Now, I know 35 days doesn't sound lightning quick, but in this market now, things have evened out a bit, so houses are taking a slightly longer time to sell. Mm -hmm. So 35 days is actually pretty good. Once we've made changes to your house, that should be a similar story for yourselves. Sounds good. Well, let's get to it then. OK. 
To help us get to it quickly, I've called in some help from general contractor Anthony Sayers. Christina, Adam, I'd like you to meet Anthony. He is head of construction and he will walk you through the changes we're going to make in your house. Okay, sounds good. Walking around the front of the house, I noticed the paint, it looks a little tired. Yeah. So we'll address that by giving the wood a light sand and then painting it out a nice neutral color. That will freshen it up a little bit. Maybe add some patio furniture out in the front and just make it more inviting. Curb appeal is incredibly important. Coming into the house, okay. the paint color, we just need to soften the gray and just make it a little bit more suburban friendly. Okay. Also, um, these pillars that are here, mm -hmm. we'll address it by just simply boxing with just some MDF, just making it a square pillar. Because we think they look old fashioned, so we want to give them a modern look to blend in with the rest of the house. In the kitchen, we'll take out these two big units and I will build some lower cabinets and upper cabinets along with the new countertop and some open shelves and just make it more of a permanent fixture in the kitchen. We want to use up every available inch in this kitchen to make useful prep space and storage space. We're not doing any real major jobs because you've done most of the work. Mm -hmm. It's just making it look cosmetically more in keeping with the neighbourhood, which I think will appeal to potential buyers. Let's not stand around then, we've got a lot of work to do. OK. I don't feel bad about the decor being removed, only because we know that this is not the house that we're going to be staying in, and it's to appeal to a wider you know, range of people. So we're just excited to move on to the next chapter of our life into a new home. Pillars can come in all different shapes and sizes. This one is round. I'm going to make it a simple square pillar. What I've done is taken pieces of MDF and just ripped them to the sizes that I need. I've also mitered the corners so that each piece will fit nice and snug together. I will glue and nail the corners so that they don't open up over time. Prime it and paint it. It'll be beautiful. For $40, you can't go wrong. Things are looking really good. Huge improvement on the house. Things are looking a little bit more suburban, yeah. for sure. Yeah, just the colors, fun. and it's just a little bit more neutral, and it kind of blends in more with the neighborhood. It makes me feel confident that we're going to sell. Wow. Look at this, you have doubled the size of the kitchen. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. I love all the countertop space. Nice. I found these lower cabinets in the basement. We're saving $400. Wow. Yeah. This countertop I just got as well. And then I'm gonna use these shelves and make up open shelving. So there's gonna be one here and then there's gonna be a longer one at the top. When it's finished, I'll add the kick plate. It's just a, a finished piece of wood that will close off the bottom and then I uh, will put some nice decorative handles. How much did this all cost you? Altogether, I would say $250. So for $250, you doubled the size of the kitchen, created a breakfast bar and storage. Yes. It's amazing. You obviously have your hands full, so I'm going to leave you to it. Thanks. The kitchen is one of the most important rooms in the house, and buyers will be looking for space to prep and cook. So whatever small projects you can do to enhance it will pay off in the end. This comparable house nearby has been enhanced to match the neighbourhood. It's an older house that's been given a fresh paint job, but the beautiful landscaping still makes it stand out. Inside, the living room has that suburban feel that buyers in this area are looking for. The layout showcases its functionality as a family living space, with the decor blending the most neutral palettes of beiges and creams. The dining room has that same traditional feel that's common in this neighbourhood, but with a modern touch that will appeal to a wide range of potential buyers. Its uncluttered and simple look makes it easy for anyone to feel comfortable in this space. The kitchen's fresh colour tones and lack of clutter presents it as a bright, clean and spacious room. Updated appliances, plenty of counter space and ample storage are all important features that will catch the eye of potential buyers.
A modern kitchen will increase your home selling potential and can put your house miles ahead of the pack in terms of market appeal. The master bedroom has fresh but muted colours that show off the amount of space instead of shocking the eye with harsh tone. And angling the chair and lamp creates a nook. Buyers love to see a bedroom with extra potential. This house has all the elements a suburban family needs and more, giving it a competitive edge in a market where properties need to stand out in the crowd. Because, as I've said before, the first impression is all you get when you're trying to sell. Christina and Adam aren't your typical suburban couple, and their house reflected their style. We've upgraded the curb appeal and the kitchen and toned down the decor, and I think the house will now appeal to urbanites and suburbanites alike. The exterior of this house was a throwback to the 70s and seriously lacked the curb appeal needed to draw buyers in. A little paint quickly brought it decades forward and coupled with inviting furniture to define the front patio, this house is now ready to receive buyers. Inside, the rock and roll living room was too bold as a first impression, but without even changing the furniture, it looks inviting now. Simply painting the walls a calmer shade and adding accessories, like throw pillows, a muted rug and new drapes, we've reached our goal and made this room suburban family friendly. The homemade pillars had a dated feel that didn't quite match with the rest of the house, so we gave them a sleeker look that reflects the modern trends buyers will see when they're checking out the competition, and we want this house to be able to compete. The kitchen's makeshift cabinet storage was simply all wrong and left no room for counter space, let alone a good impression. But Anthony's simple breakfast bar has transformed the room, turning it into a family kitchen that has loads of space for prep, storage and catching a quick meal. If you don't have an eating kitchen, a breakfast bar is the next best thing. With just this small addition, we've improved the use of the space considerably. You don't need to do a major renovation to infuse your kitchen with elements that will help sell it. And by simply using some clever tricks and a bit of imagination, we've turned this kitchen into a selling feature of the house. The dining room was quite stark and needed more wow to appeal to a wider range of buyers, but we gave it a romantic feel so people can picture themselves entertaining. The bright red drapes were replaced with panels that have that traditional look we know is appealing in this neighborhood. And the new light fixture adds elegance. Leading upstairs, the black railing was a bit of a fright, so we painted it a friendly white to ensure the neutral decor flows right through to each level of the house. The master bedroom was overrun with black furniture and accent pieces that buyers just couldn't see past. So we gave it an adult facelift, adding pops of color that make it look grown up and warm. We switched up the black and white drapes for more sophisticated looking ones and added new bedding and accessories that will entice suburban buyers into imagining this bedroom as their own. The decor of your house needs to match the neighborhood when you're trying to sell. And at a total cost of $3,900, taking this house from uber urban to neutrally suburban will pay off. Buyers looking in this neighborhood will now feel right at home. Going over and above to target the right market just makes sense. Newer suburbs often don't have mature trees, so by buying larger trees and shrubs instead of saplings, you get a real leg up in the curb appeal department. Everyone likes a deal, home buyers included, so if you can leave window coverings and light fixtures, do, because a lot of exclusions just put potential buyers off. In suburbs, using your car is a necessity, so when you're selling, don't overlook the garage because it's effectively another room in the house. Make sure it's clutter-free so you highlight the space and storage potential. This house now fits into the neighborhood. It's modern, but it's not too edgy. It's got great curb appeal and a kitchen with lots of prep space and plenty of style. Now we just have to see if buyers agree. I think we've got one of the best houses on the block and it shows. So let's get the open house started and see what the potential buyers think. So we've got the sitting room here. Yeah, it's a nice size. Like, nice bright colors. Mm -hmm. I think that it's a major improvement from the last time we saw it. It was very gray before and I noticed that you changed the color. Makes it yeah. feel a bit more spacious. So you have seen it before? Yeah. 
And do you like the open plan look? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And the floors are nice too. I've never seen floors actually this color. I like the big windows. Mm, nice. Really open it up. Well, come on through to the kitchen. It's nice, it's very bright. Do you think there's enough prep space for you? Yeah, I was just going to say, not lots of counter space, and I like that uh, it actually has a breakfast bar there, too. Mm -hmm. you got the shelves up there. You can put, you know, dishes or china, whatever you want. Yeah. But, you know, it just gives us more space. I think yeah. with all the bright colours, you make it look larger than it really is. Come on through to the dining room. This is nice and modern. Mm -hmm. Large enough. Yeah. yeah, you could do some entertaining in here. I like the floating shelf, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. I really like the window coverings. Mm -hmm. They're quite nice. For the size of the room, you put the right furniture in. Mm -hmm. And for a young couple, it's adequate. Well, should we go upstairs to the master bedroom? Sure. That's brilliant. So here is the master bedroom. Oh, very nice. I'm glad you like it. Oh, I do. I like the big window, too. Yeah. And I like that it's low. It's your color, aren't you green? Yeah. Original parquet floor. Yeah. Which is very nice. Good condition. I like this style. This is the stuff I like for cantering them up. Now, should we go downstairs? There's a few yeah. questions I want to ask you. Okay. What do you like about the house? Definitely like the living room. Mm -hmm. The dining room's a nice size. And the curb appeal. You definitely like. has it. It's a very nice lot. Now, what about the style of the house? It's styled for people our age. Yeah. It is probably one of the most drawing things to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we don't have to do anything. Now, it's on the market for $269,000. Do you think that's competitive with what you've seen? It seems to be yeah. better than what we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I think it's very competitive, just because it shows really good. Yeah. There's a lot of beat-up houses in mm -hmm. this price range. So w would you consider maybe coming back for a second view? Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, I think we will. Yeah, no, I could potentially see us here, for sure. Fantastic. Yeah. The biggest changes would have to be the colors. It's a lot brighter now. I can see how it's more inviting to to, to an outsider looking in for the first time. We should have done all this at the beginning. Yeah, it looks a lot better. The kitchen looks like it is supposed to be a kitchen now instead of, you know, CD cabinet. Mismatch. Somewhere. I really feel the house is going to sell this time. Yeah. I, I don't think we're going to have any problems at all. No, not at all. Taking Christina and Adam's house from urban to suburban not only makes it fit in with the neighborhood, but has boosted interest levels in this charming family property, bringing this couple one step closer to their friends and family and the excitement of a new life. As a property expert and someone who's moved house many, many times, I know how stressful it can be selling your home. If it's been on the market for a long time, you've got to make those necessary changes to get it sold. Because the quicker you got it sold, the quicker you can move on with the rest of your life. Buying a detached house has always been on Christina's to-do list. But now she's got more house than she needs and much bigger household bills than she wants. It's listed at $364,500, hasn't received a single offer. But that's why we're here, to take the burden off Christina's shoulders and to turn this house from unsellable to sellable. Good boy. I live here with my dog named Coda, so it's a lot of house for one person. Uh, it's a lot of upkeep. Even just cleaning, cleaning's a big thing to do with a three-level house. After living here for a year, I realized to own a detached home, it is expensive. So at this point in time, I'm house poor. It's been on the market for about three months and it's time to get out. Christina's house is described as a designer, three bedroom, open concept home with hardwood floors throughout and a gorgeous kitchen. On paper, a must see. Let's go and see why it isn't. Hello. Hello, Hi. how are you? Welcome to my home. Thank you so much. You're having difficulty selling? Yes, I am. I need some help. Lovely big open plan room. And I love the floors. Did you put them in yourself? I did. I put the hardwood floors in the mm -hmm. entire house. It's a good return on your money because hardwood floors sell, basically. Now, this giant chair <laughs> is where the dining table should be. I haven't made the investment to buy mm -hmm. a dining room table. So no dining room. Hmm, interesting. Now, this is the kitchen. Wow. This is really, really stylish. It's also got everything the potential buyers look for. It's got granite, storage. This is a kind of kitchen that appeals to potential buyers. Now, what is through here? Don't go in there. Wish I hadn't. 
Are those mosquito nets for curtains? No, they're not, but they would work for mosquito nets. Yes, absolutely. This place looks like it's held together with <laughs> pins and a prayer. What are you hiding up there? There is a little piece of the ceiling missing, so uh -huh. I just covered it up with fabric. Right. Should we go upstairs? Sure, yeah. Brilliant. This office can easily be converted to a third bedroom, which is a plus for buyers. Nice size second bedroom. I love the fact the hardwood floor runs throughout the house. That's brilliant. Well, should we go through to the master bedroom? Yeah. Really lovely master bedroom. Spacious, nice colour, and that's what potential buyers are looking for. Now, the inside of the house is pretty spot on, but there are a few things I want to discuss with you about the outside of the house. OK. So should we go and do that now? Yeah, let's go. Can't wait. Okay. Curb appeal is so important when you're selling your house, especially in this case where the house looks great on the inside. You want to draw people in, and if it's a mess on the outside, they're going to assume it's the same for the interior. So we want it to look really nice on the outside, and to be honest, I'm slightly underwhelmed. I mean, you've got a sort of old, rusty light, <laughs> some serious lawn cutting to do, and uh, a weed hedge at the front. <laughs> Lovely big yard. Hmm. Not loving the outside of the sunroom. The shingles are peeling off an old... Yes, it needs a little TLC. Definitely a little TLC. But anyway, let's go and have our little chat inside. The interior of Christina's home is immaculate, but the exterior leaves a lot to be desired. So if she wants to sell her house anytime soon, she's going to have to sort out the curb appeal too sweet. First things first, you have done such an incredible job on the inside of this house. Unfortunately, when I walked up the front steps of the house, I wasn't expecting to see anything like this. And that, I think, is what a lot of people will think when they're driving past, which unfortunately means they might just drive on. We need the curb appeal to be really spot on. It just needs to be brightened up. It needs to have a bit of wow factor. We want everyone to think that the outside of the house looks as great as the inside. So, the curb appeal at the front we want to address, and also the sunroom and the curb appeal at the back. Now, the sunroom looks like you're hiding a whole manner of problems up in the ceiling. It is something we need to address, because this house is structurally sound, and we don't want people thinking otherwise from the state of the sunroom. Yeah, very good point. I would never have thought of it that way. Now, in this area, two-thirds of the homeowners have kits. It's a family oriented neighbourhood. Now, at the moment, this room is fantastic, but it does lack that family vibe. So by adding a dining area here, I think it will appeal much more to families and it will slightly change the vibe of the room. So we, the changes we're going to make to this house inside and out will appeal to a broader range of people and ultimately get this house sold quickly. Sounds great. Let's get started. Yeah, let's get to it. Christina likes to do things a little differently. At 30, she's already downsizing. Now, the improvements she's made on her home are fantastic, but it's not all about staging and styling. You've got to know your market. And this area is popular with families. So unless Christina's house becomes more family friendly, selling is going to remain on her to-do list. Christina's house is ideally located, close to schools, parks, transit links. It should be an ideal family home, but no one's made any offers. And that is why I'm off to see Cheryl Phillips, the realtor. I'd like to know why she thinks this house is unsellable. So how many open houses have you had? We've had about eight open houses. Wow. Have you reduced the price? The house started substantially higher, and we have reduced it a couple of times. I think we're at the right price now. OK. And this house does have three bedrooms? Three bedrooms, large backyard. So it should appeal to the families? It should, yes. A first impression is a lasting impression, and I think that people need the wow factor just walking up to the door. You're absolutely right. Inside is so stylish, and modern, contemporary, open plan, beautiful. And I wasn't expecting to see this sort of modern dream of a house. Right, we've got a bit of work to do, but you're going to come back in a couple of days, aren't you, for the open house? I am. Well, it was lovely to meet you, and I'll see you in a couple of days. We'll see you in a couple of days. Christina has done a really wonderful job decorating her home, but there are some problem areas that she needs to address if she wants to get a sale. Now I'm going to go and show her a comparable house that's sold and quickly. 
Like Christina's, this house has an unusual exterior with a big front yard. I know what you're thinking about the curb appeal. It's slightly all over the place. Having said that, it does have a sort of storybook charm to it, and it kind of matches the exterior of the house. Mm -hmm. Anyway, should we go inside? Yeah. First thing potential buyers think when they walk in this room, if they've got family, it's great. You know, a lot of storage space. You've got the kids' coats, mittens, the space for a pram. But more than that, it feels like a permanent structure. You know, the ceiling's not held together with pins and a drape. Doesn't feel like it get blown away in a gust of wind. It's a nice, usable space. Mm. Anyway, come on through to the sitting room. Nice, clearly defined sitting area, dining area. No confusion to what this area is. I think what helps in this case is a staircase going up the middle, because that clearly defines the two rooms. Anyway, come through to the dining room. The main problem with your house at the moment is instead of a dining room table, you've got a big old leather chair. Now, this space, we have a large six-seater table. Mm -hmm. So anyone coming in here is not going to think, oh my god, is there room for a dining room table? Because there is one in here. Easy peasy, let's put a dining room table in. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Now, with this house, it's easy for potential buyers especially buyers with families, to imagine themselves living here. There's a clearly defined sitting room, a clearly defined dining room. When you're selling your house, you want to be able to appeal to the broadest range of people possible. It's a very simple rule, but one applies to every house you will ever sell. Now, this house was obviously very appealing to potential buyers because it sold for a thousand bucks under asking price, but in eight days. Eight days? Wow, I wish. We can make your house just as appealing to potential buyers. It's 95% there. It is 95% there, it just needs the other 5%. Mm -hmm. So should we get to it? Let's go. Come on. To help us with that 5%, I've called in general contractor Anthony Sayers. Christina, Anthony is head of construction. Great. The peeling paint, it's cracking, it's peeling everywhere. Your railing, there's a lot of rust on it. So we need to just address the whole front and make it more attractive for people coming in. We need this house to pop, because that maybe will draw the eye down from the really barney top. Now, I was giving Christina a hard time about the sunroom. We'll fix the ceiling, as well as we'll paint it out a nice, light, modern color. So it actually looks like it's an extension of your kitchen, which is modern, stylish, and clean. We want the sunroom to be modern, stylish, and clean as well. Sounds like a great idea. The fact that you have shingles as cladding <laughs> for the sunroom. Not so modern? No. <laughs> so we'll fix that up and we're good to go. But that's quite a lot, so we better get to it. Okay. Excellent. See. Bye. So did you find anything under all this stuff? Just the fact that there was no insulation in the ceiling. Wow. Yeah, all there was was just a half sheet of plywood covering the ceiling. It should have been insulated, so I put insulation everywhere. Right. So now we can sit in the room in the wintertime. And not freeze to death. And not freeze to death, right. So is it difficult putting insulation in? Not really. You just got to remember when you're doing insulation, you don't want to stuff it too tight, right? You just got to keep it loose for airflow, yeah. right? So you can trap the warm air. Yeah. Then I put the quarter-inch plywood on the ceiling. And then I use this uh, one by material yeah. to line the perimeter. So now this is going to be a clearly defined mudroom. Yeah, I'm going to put some more hooks on the walls. So when the kids are coming from the yard, they just shovel their stuff here, then don't trail mud all through the kitchen. Exactly. Fantastic. Well, I'll leave you to it. OK, thank you. It's definitely changing for me because it's not really my style, but I guess that's the whole point of it. Um, taking my style out and being more of a generic style. Railing was in really bad shape. It was really rusted and almost ready to be replaced. I've taken a wire brush and scraped off any rust and any loose paint that was on the railing. After I removed all the rust, I took a special red oxidizing primer and just coated pretty much the whole railing. It helps prevent more rust from forming and just eating through the metal. I've got this special roller that you can get at any local paint store. It's designed for painting railings. It's curved 
and you can get in between all the grooves and it just kind of takes the shape of whatever you're painting and it'll just make your job a lot faster and easier. And I'm recoating the whole railing using a black semi-gloss paint that will just make the whole railing look brand new again. Christina's house has a lot going for it on the inside, but the outside used to look like a big old brown barn. And I think a lot of potential drive-by buyers didn't get through the front door as a result. But now, with a little bit of paint and some landscaping, it's looking a lot more charming and inviting. Mr. Spot. So what are you going to do when you sell this place, then? Downsize. Most people do not downsize at 30, but that's what I love about you. <laughs> You've just done it completely the wrong way around. But we've got to get this place sold first. Yes. Mm. I think having a dining area is going to make a big difference. Yeah, I think so, too. This successfully sold property proves the point. The exterior matches the interior, and buyers will find no surprises but the good kind when they walk inside. The open concept main level has just the right amount of furniture, clearly defining the function of each area. There's no guesswork for the buyers on how to use this space, and correct placement of the couch and chairs creates a seating area that is perfect for entertaining. The top of the line kitchen proves that Christina got it right with the upgrades, since granite countertop, stainless steel appliances, and a tile backsplash are all huge selling features, if you can get buyers in the door. And, as you can see, these homeowners have spent as much time on the outside as they did on the inside, and it definitely shows. Christina's house should have been really popular with families, but the ugly exterior and the lack of a dining room was leaving buyers unsatisfied. But that is all changed. Christina's house will now make a great family home inside and out. This house needed curb appeal to match the already beautiful interior. So we brightened up the porch to draw in buyers. The overgrown hedges have been scaled back. Greenery gives the porch an inviting feel and a new light fixture dresses it up while adding decorative function along with the new chairs. We chose contemporary paint colors to freshen up the pillars, the front window, and most importantly, the front door. First impressions are key, and a modern door will get people walking through. If you have the luxury of a front porch, don't ignore its potential to add value to your sale. The curb appeal here promises buyers a continuous wow factor from outside to inside. The living area was already in good shape, but we needed some cosier space planning. So we changed the layout to feel inviting instead of awkward. New drapes are simple but add warmth and we dressed up Christina's original pieces with accessories that are modern but not overdone. Neglecting a proper dining area left too much to buyers' imaginations. But the addition of a much needed table and chairs gave this space the function it was lacking. Track lighting was replaced by a proper dining room fixture and new drapery adds a touch of sophistication. Buyers need to see a room's purpose, and a good-sized dining room is a huge selling point for families. So showing it off properly will pay off in the end. The fashionable kitchen was already a selling feature of this house, but one great kitchen doesn't overshadow bigger real estate problems, so presenting each room properly is key. We restored the mudroom to give the same updated feel as the rest of the house. And the new insulated ceiling is now a bonus instead of a concern. Buyers can now see the benefits of having a proper mudroom. The new light fixture gives a smart look alongside functional accessories like hooks for hanging coats and storage for shoes and boots. The rundown exterior was giving off the impression that this house needed work. The worn shingles are gone and the newly painted exterior looks fresh and solid. Taking the times for repairs can quickly eliminate any fear of instability and can turn a problem area into an asset. When selling, the exterior and interior must satisfy the sensibilities of buyers in the neighborhood. And at a total cost of $3,700,
we gave this house a family-friendly boost, maximised the function and groomed from the road to entice buyers through the front door. Marketing is key when you're selling your house, so it's vital to pinpoint your target market. Now, if you're selling a large home in an area close to schools, parks, amenities, you better make sure it's family friendly. A first impression is a lasting impression, so do not underestimate the importance of curb appeal. Rusting railings, peeling paint, it screams unkempt and uncared for, and that does not get you asking price offers. Don't just hide problems, fix them. Hiding a hole in the plaster with a painting, putting rugs over damaged carpets, and other quick fixes will cost you in the end, because buyers will wonder what other skeletons are you hiding in your closet. Overall, the changes are fantastic. Inside of the house, it's so luscious and full and, and more of family feel. And even in the outside, it's much brighter. It's more of a welcome look to come on in and see what's inside. Well, it's almost time for the open house. The changes we've made have created a family-friendly house with some serious curb appeal. But we'll have to wait and see what the potential buyers think, because the proof is in the pudding. Well, our work here is done. The open house is almost upon us. And that's our first real chance to see what potential buyers think of Christina's home. Fingers crossed. Hello. Hi, I'm Sophie. Hi, Sophie. So what do you think about the outside of the house? I think it's cute. Yeah. It has a nice feel to it. Yes, it looks very fresh and welcoming. So should we go on inside? Oh, this is beautiful. So here's the sitting area. Oh, wow. Ooh. Cool. I love the open plan. Do you like it? Well, it's beautiful. Do you? Yeah. yeah, I do. Now, I think you'll find this is enough room to entertain in. You could totally have a family in here. Oh, and yeah. entertaining, too. Yeah, family great. functions. You know, the white is great. Usually people don't like that, but I think it makes it look clean mm -hmm. yeah. and big. It's terrific. Come on through to the mudroom. Okay. Oh, really nice. I love this room because it's got loads of storage, a place where you can keep your Wellington boots, your coats. I really love this yard. And then, yes, your mudroom. It's nice, very oh, modern. Yeah, very nice. Great nice colors. colors. Yeah. I think the mudroom now is finished off fantastically. It really shows off the house in the end, from the backyard, mm -hmm. very yeah. nicely. Now, is this what you look for in a house? I think so. Nice and open, great for entertaining, great for family gatherings. I love that you don't have to do anything. It's perfect yes. moving condition. Now, it's on the market for $364,500. Does that sound fair to you? From what we looked at, yes. Pretty area, for sure. Well, I'm glad you liked it. It was a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Nice to meet you as well. Well, the open house went swimmingly. Christina has put a lot of love and care into her house. But now, with the changes we've made, I think it's going to be snapped up really soon. The house is definitely a different style now. It's more of a cosy, warm feeling now. I am sad. I definitely am going to miss this house. It looks fantastic, so future. I'm just looking forward to the future. Giving Christina's house the curb appeal to match the beautiful interior is just what it needed to attract family buyers in this neighborhood. Christina can now tackle the next item on her life's to-do list after accepting an offer for just under the asking price, turning this unsellable house to sold.